in modern society now, wellness takes a front row seat. Not even just exercise, but just health and wellness in general uh, and just making you feel good. Uh, mm. We're putting a Band-Aid on your problems. You know, uh, it's not a bad thing to put a priority on our health. I want to make that disclaimer, but bowing to our flesh is dangerous. Uh, and I know somebody, maybe maybe you're not a believer and you're um, automatically on the comments right now uh, saying that maybe we're a little bit extreme for saying that, but when we put an emphasis on ourselves too much, that will manifest in some pretty dangerous behaviors. Uh, so I want to put that out there. Yeah, uh, 100%. There's a difference between respecting your body and taking care of your body and then idolizing your body, as sure. you said. It's like an idol is anything that we essentially put above all other things and we dedicate all of our time and effort and energy and money and all this stuff to it. Um, so yeah, health definitely can become that, especially now that we're living in this health revolution. So there's like yeah. a difference, like, like, well, yeah, the health revolution is like, there's all these things that can maximize this, that, or the other thing about your body. Um, mm -hmm. Your body is a gift from God and you are a steward of your body. Um, you are not necessarily, you are not necessarily the owner, so to speak of your body, but you're the steward mm -hmm. of your body. So God gives you your body and because it's his gift, you take care of it. People who are, are, are in search of perfection with their body. And I think, I think this is, as I said, this is a problem in this day and age because medicines come so far, nutrition's come so far, all these things have come so far. And then the commercialism of all of it, like trying to promote, like you can be like the perfect human, yeah. um, which is a lie in certain ways is we're all broken. So we're not, we're like, we can't be perfect. So in the Bible, it says, be perfect. Like your heavenly father is perfect. Um, but this is, th this is kind of a different thing because there's this level of trying too hard to be perfect with your body can come at the expense of your soul. And therefore you're not being perfect because then you're neglecting that. And then like, so there's this, there's the balance that kind of comes in. Sure. Um, yeah. I, I would say that we have a grass is greener mentality now that we have a lot more advantages in technological innovation uh, when it comes to nutrition and more scientific study. We do have a grass is greener mentality. When perfect for our body is the standard, I think it actually has caused a lot of anxiety. I know I was in this space, like this mm -hmm. idea, and I think uh, as an athlete or as a former athlete, you can definitely fall into this because especially with um, sports that are uh, like, we were in a racing sport, like a cardiovascular endurance sport. So like our body was our instrument, like our mm -hmm. body was like what we used to compete with. Like, you know, some, yeah. some sports have brackets and clubs and other equipment, like our equipment was our body. Um, so it was, we tried to focus on maximizing the potential of our body so that we could swim faster. Um, mm -hmm. so it kind of gets in that mentality that your body always has to be in a state of like perfection or maximum performance potential. Um, but, uh, it's just, it's, it's impossible to get that because our bodies are broken. Like because our bodies are broken, it's impossible to be perfect so that when you get caught up in this thing that you think it should be perfect. And then inevitably doesn't, it just leads to this constant strain of anxiety, or like we start getting going to the extreme that if I'm not at top peak performance, then all of a sudden I'm, I'm breaking down. Like I'm, I'm, I'm dying, like, you know, or like, I'm like my, my, I'm never going to be the same. Like, I, I don't know. I just, I know in my own personal experience, that's kind of what I have felt. Cause like mm -hmm. when perfect's the standard and you fall short of perfect, then it, you develop a lot of anxiety. Right. Um, so yeah, I know I went through that year, year and a half ago, still doing a little education that every little thing that breaks, like all of a sudden you're, you're all up in arms, you know, whether it's just yeah. like a, a little injury or a little illness or something. It's just when you, when you when your goal is perfection, you all of a sudden, when one of those things think it's just like, ah, like yeah. the sky is falling. <laughs> um, thoughts on that? Sure. Um, I can give a pretty recent account. Um, there are a lot of Instagram accounts that I follow that are health based, uh, just depends on like the food that, uh, we eat and kind of exposing a lot of the stuff that is mass produced, uh, saying that it is not good for us for certain ingredients that they put in there. Very educational, very good. Uh, and I learned a lot, even, even just in the span of like two, three months that I had started looking at this stuff. Um, to give you some sense of perspective, the, products that they were talking about are everything with a label on it basically has something called seed oils which have a lot of defense chemicals and they're filled with lin linoleic acid that that damage our gut and mess with the the lining of our stomach and i suppose you know 
that made me incredibly hyper aware and like saying like my whole life was a lie ah because like i love um chips ahoy or um even saltine crackers or you know like these everyday things um that i had taken you know or, or eaten like for 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 sometimes pleasure that's the thing sometimes pleasure mm -hmm. Uh, or even something like ibuprofen, you know, uh, when you have that when I was sick, I would only have that when I was sick. And, you know, it's a blood thinner, but it also damages like our gut lining and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, I've only had like two of those pills when I was, you know, not feeling so hot and stuff like that. But I said, like, no, like, I can't have this at all. And maybe I won't ever have it again. But still, like, that underlying message that like I had to make my body perfect. I had to make sure that I cut out like so many of these things and just like cold turkey and only go like uh, grass fed, like something that's like all natural and stuff like that. Um, while I'll still include that, it's just I have to reframe my thinking mm -hmm. uh, s because it just doesn't really seem long lasting. Like I need to let go that this is my earthly body and you know i'm still young but i'm taking greater me like of course i'm going to the dentist i'm going to the doctors i'm going to the chiropractor which is good for you know my overall like communication of my body sure but this stuff i have to make sure that i let go because a lot of it is due to pride which is the, the source of all sin you know yeah, yeah. I think like the biggest thing is just remembering like everyone listening here, like there's two things that are guaranteed in this life. You will suffer and you will die. And there's no avoiding either of those things. And sometimes mm -hmm. I think a lot of us prioritize like try to idolize health because we're trying to avoid those things or thinking that we can. Um, this, this thing is like, everybody's going to die in some way, shape or form. It's, it's going to happen. We we are not immortal, and no matter how studied we become on medicine or nutrition or anything, we are going to die. Like that's the thing, and I guess it's trying to find the, the that balance between like, well, I want to live a long, healthy life, but I also don't want to live like forever, you know. Or you can't live forever, so you shouldn't necessarily be mentally thinking like I need to make myself live forever. And even this thing of like trying to avoid suffering, it's like you will suffer in this world, like you will be uncomfortable and there's a level of you can't avoid it, even if you do everything perfectly. Um, so how much of that is like, okay, I will avoid the unnecessary suffering versus like, I will avoid all suffering all the time ever. And mm -hmm. um, I think that's because I've, I've heard a lot of the, the, the these nutritional advice things, too. And I've gotten in that mindset, too, of like, oh, my gosh, I got to completely change my diet and I got to do everything because all this stuff was just so bad. And like, um, but it, it, the same thing is like that can lead once again to disturbance of your peace of mind. Uh, it can distract you from prayer. It can distract you from your soul and your mind. Like, you know, it could cause mental anxiety. So that's like now you're damaging your mind, even though you're taking care of your body. And, or it can distract from the soul because once again, we're thinking too much about, you know, trying to elongate our body rather than like use it like yeah. in that space. Um, are you going to try to prolong your life forever? Or are you going to try to or increase the quantity of your life? Or are you going to increase the quality of your life? Well, um, what I will say to that is that even if we're coming from a good place where we're trying to take care of our body you know, it's easy to justify the decisions that we're making because that's what we do to ourselves. It's these little highways and byways, these decisions that we make, we justify what we are doing because it's good for us, right? It's easy mm -hmm. to start justifying our decisions, our purchases when it comes, like, because that's a decision. When, you know, we tell ourselves it's good for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People get preoccupied with like the nature of food, for example, is it is to fuel our bodies, but it is also for, it is for pleasure. Like it is for the joy of eating. And then there's other things like building community and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, food has multiple purposes. It's not just health. It's like to fuel mm -hmm. our bodies correctly with health, but also like the enjoyment factor of food is important. Right. Um, and so I think people have to recognize that it's okay to enjoy food. Now you shouldn't eat only to enjoy food, right. but you also shouldn't eat only for health. 
Right. Like there's a balance between the two. You have to use them both. So like certain mm -hmm. people will only eat certain things because they only will eat healthy, but they don't really enjoy what they're eating or they don't pick what they eat based on taste mm -hmm. only. Whereas then there's the other side of people who only eat based on pleasure and only eat like what will what will taste good and don't really give a crap about what's healthy. So it's like somewhere in the middle. Um, you have to live a healthy overall lifestyle that's a balance mm -hmm. between the two. Mm -hmm. um, because like, and I think we can sometimes fall into the trap when we get health conscious. It's like with a lot of these health tips, it's like, yeah, it's not bad to live a, a, a general life based around these things. But like, for example, if you want to have ice cream, because you want ice cream and it's like you don't normally like it's not like you're having it every day like you can do that it's not you drinking poison like it's yeah. not like one time every so often like moderation like is you can still do that yeah There's, it's um i think sometimes if we get too caught up in the health we think that every little tiny thing that we do in the diet can be like poison and it's yeah. like well no like habits kind of form poison like mm -hmm. unless it's actual poison don't drink poison people like it's we aren't advocating for tide pie challenge yeah don't please no that's not food the chemicals are not food god just because you can eat it doesn't mean god made it as food mm -hmm.